Welcome to the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series Ford 200 Qualify, Homestead, Miami, Florida. The final race of the season for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. It's been an overcast day. I guess the best word you could describe that would be consistent. The track hasn't gotten any warmer or cooler throughout the day because of the cloud cover over the track. Take a look at our Ford point standings, and it's down to two. Todd Bodine or Johnny Benson tonight will be crowned the 2006 NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series champion. Hello, everyone. Phil Parsons, Daryl Waltrip, joining me up in the booth for qualifying. Now, again, two guys come down to our championship race, Todd Bodine or Johnny Benson. You've already given it to Todd. Well, I did. Last week I said it's over, but uh, Johnny did such a great job. Boy, that was really a big, that was bold <laughs> right there, Phil. <laughs> Go out on the limb. <laughs> but Johnny did such a great job that he still gives himself a chance. I talked to Rick Wren in the garage area before qualifying and said we really worked hard on qualifying because we know we have to, we have to lead all the laps. So we've got us qualify up front. So they really worked hard. They've got one of the fastest, if not the fastest trucks here. So look for Johnny to be good qualifying and the race. What about qualifying here? What's what's key to qualifying up front, DW? Well, I, I think a number of things. First of all, you got to have a fast truck. But uh, the line that you run, I mean, you can run all kinds of different ways around this racetrack. You can run down low, but I think the hot tip is running in low and using that progressive banking. You just kind of run up into that banking, and the right front starts to dig, and the thing starts to turn, and you're wide open in the gas. Some of these guys will probably try to run the first lap wide open around here. I'm glad I'm not out there with them. <laughs> Again, this progressive banking, 18 to 20 degrees around this mile-and-a-half track. Again, the race starts at 7.30 this evening, so make sure to stay tuned here to speed for the Ford 200. Let's go down trackside to Ray Dunlap. Well, thank you, Rick. Rick and uh, Phil and Daryl, everybody up in the booth, they've all said it's Todd's championship to win, right? Well, if Johnny Benson wins today, Todd Bodine only has to finish 28th or better. So how did they do in practice today? Well, in the very first practice today, you'll see Johnny Benson right up here, second fast. Where is Todd Bodine? Oh, my goodness, we can't find him, can't find him. He's all the way down in 30th. Todd not happy at all with his truck here. They've made a lot of improvements in practice too, right? No, not really. Johnny Benson, second fastest on the charts right here. Todd Bodine only moved up to 22nd. Now, guys, I believe that you're exactly right. It is Todd's championship. But these charts right here say it may not be quite as easy to win as we thought it might be. Hermie? Another guy to keep out on in qualifying is Chase Miller in the forward truck. He had a great first practice. Uh, first practice and then the uh, second practice he scrubbed the wall coming off turn four got loose on sticker tires so it'd be interesting to see how these guys get up to speed on stickers one thing that people don't pay a lot of attention to when qualifying is how important it is to get off turn four and get to the start finish line if you don't do that you're not gonna have a very good lap in qualifying guys dw i'm gonna ask you todd bodine right now what's his what is his mindset coming into this where he's got a bad truck, or at least it seems like that in practice, but he's got a championship to win tonight, and it's his to lose. But I think if you look at that team all year long, qualifying has not been their strong suit. They start back in the field, and that really seems like it motivates them. It seems like they really work harder on getting their truck good in the race so they can come through the field, and you always notice by the end of the night, he is there challenging for the win, and wins a lot. Oh, yes. DW, you've, you've been in this position before, Todd Bodine's position. You've had a lead coming in where you had to finish whatever. How much pressure is that, and how much sleep did you get that week before that last race? Very few times do you come to a race with the kind of lead that Todd has. And so there's not a lot of pressure on him. He can ride around at the back, protect his uh, position, take care of his truck, and charge at the very end. And if I were him, with the kind of lead he has, I'd keep that in mind. But I know he's also a Bodine. And Bodines like to go hard, and he wants to win the race and the championship. Most definitely. Again, as you mentioned, he's only got to beat eight trucks to claim the championship tonight. First out onto the racetrack, Marcus Ambrose. From down under, making his first run here at Miami and Homestead Speedway. This guy's had a good year, though. He stepped into this truck, and uh, he's been impressive on a number of occasions. And this is the first time ever in any kind of a vehicle like this, whether it be a car or a truck. He's, road racing is his background. Very, very successful back in his native Australia. But I, I think he's done a terrific job. Going to move up to the Bush Series next year, driving for Wood Brothers STG Race. You had mentioned earlier, DW, about the line around this racetrack. Again, progressive banking in the corners from 18 to 20 degrees as you move up the racetrack. 
Yeah, it, it almost looks like you say he's washing out coming off the corner, but you're actually using that progressive banking. You go in there nice and low, and then let that thing just kind of rock it to the top because he's in the throttle wide open, and the, car, and the truck's got a great look to it. That thing is down on the ground. It's cleaning up some earth. Ray Dunlap. You know, guys, I wondered if Marcus Ambrose wouldn't be better off to run another year in the Craftsman Truck Series because he is brand new to oval track racing. But I talked with a number of the executives from Ford, and they said, we believe in this guy. We know he's marketable. We know he's a great talent. And someday he's going to be in the next Hell Cup Series. So the very next best thing for him is to be in a NASCAR Bush Series car. We want to get him out of the trucks and on his way to the next Hell Cup Series. So Bush is the next step up. Always difficult to be the first one out in qualifying as well. Marcus qualifying in 32.037 seconds on his second lap. And, and I believe there's a history that we've seen with Kurt Busch and others where if you've got talent, don't waste it. If you're going to be a cup driver someday, don't waste it running trucks. Don't waste it running Bush. Go right to cup. That's the big leagues. If you can cut it here, you can cut it there guy who has been able to cut it pretty much anywhere he's run <laughs> on the racetrack now, Mark Martin. What a terrific season he's had driving this Scott's Ford number six here. Five wins and just, what, 12 or 13 starts, something like that. A terrific season thus far for Mark Martin, and he wants to close it out with a bang. Well, he's fighting that thing, Phil. He had his hands full right there in the middle of the corner, and that's really one of those places that's a transition in the uh, track right there, you'll see drivers get real loose sometime right in the middle of the turn. Yeah, a lot of the drivers said that when they did their simulated qualifying runs, even though the truck may even been tight in the center of the corner, when they did their simulated qualifying runs, they got a little bit loose. Yeah. That's what happened to Chase Miller, one of the fastest trucks here, made a sticker qualifying run in practice, lost that control of thing in the middle of the corner. Well, you can see with all that tape on the grill, and they got them pretty much taped up solid, even though these things are <laughs> got the aerodynamics of a phone booth when you tape them up they get down in the front end and they create a lot of downforce on that nose quite a bit faster for mark martin 31.827 seconds that's a little bit quicker than what mark had run in practice that's uh, about a tenth of a second faster than what he had run in practice so pretty good pickup but you know phil the trucks to, to me proved that you can take anything to the wind tunnel and work on it enough and you're going to get it aerodynamically pretty nice. These trucks have got a lot of downforce. More People always ask me about, aren't they hard to drive? Actually, they're not. I mean, that big old spoiler on the back of them holds that back end down, and that big splitter on the front puts a lot of downforce on. They've got good balance. They've got more downforce than a Nextel Cup car does right now. Yes, they do. But look at that big old blade sticking up on the back of that thing, for Pete's sake. <laughs> Guy who knows how to qualify, now on the racetrack, Jack Sprague. In that Conway Freight's number 60 Toyota Tundra. Another guy who knows how to qualify, standing by with Ray Dunlap. Well, he's sitting by, and that'd be Ron Hornaday. He's run six races here at this racetrack, all top tens. Why are you so good at this track? <laughs> I guess just the equipment. Uh, Kevin Delaney has uh, gave me an awesome Chevrolet truck right now, and I got to thank AES for helping us out and support They're giving us the rest of this year and next year. So I don't know, I kind of like it. You know, it's, it's probably the third time they've changed Homestead, so it's a little different right now. It's, it's a little slippier. Uh, <laughs> The rubber and everything on the tracks changed a lot, so uh, it's going to be a whole different race. It's going to be three grooves wide. Oh, we'll like to see that. Ron Hornaday predicting three wide racing tonight here at Homestead. But you guys, you know, you think about this thing laying down here in the sunshine all the time, isn't it? You know, it's just, just got heat on it all the time, sunshine. It draws all that new pavement and makes it white like it is now. It wasn't too long ago we came here. She was nice and black, had a lot of grip. It's going away with the, uh, with the time. Jack Sprague's second quickest. Crew chief for sale. <laughs> Uh-oh, it's Rick Red. Welcome back to Homestead. Rick Crawford now on the clock in his Ford. Just completing lap number two. 32.012 was lap number two. First lap, 32.002. That puts him third of the four trucks right now that have been on the racetrack. Next truck going out onto the track now, that South Point Dodge of Brendan Gaughan. He's looking for a better finish, I guess, to end the season. Hasn't been what he's expected. Watch him go right up to the wall there. Brendan was running in practice there, right up against the wall. You know, he's one of those guys that likes the high line, like your brother Michael, likes the high line. Brendan said, that's the only place my truck will stick, so he's going to run right against the fence. He said, qualifying, I may be able to bring it down a little bit, but race time, I'm going to be up against the fence. And he... He told you the truth. He's right there. He's a rim riding and 
you know, you can pick up a lot of speed that way. A lot of momentum coming off those corners. The number that everybody is shooting for has been set by Mark Martin, 31.827 seconds. Hermes caught up with him. Yeah, Mark Martin, 31.827 seconds. A little slippery on those new tires. Yeah, uh, you know, we picked up a little bit, but I was real disappointed with that. Uh, I sure don't think that's going to be very good, but uh, the truck's going to be good in the race. Our Scott's F-150 is going to be pretty sweet, I think, uh, if we get some green flag. You've had a lot of fun this year in this truck, haven't you? This is the best race in the NASCAR right here, buddy. I love it. Uh, I love this team, man. Uh, it breaks my heart to, to uh, you know, that's the, the one thing about next year that really breaks my heart is uh, having a race against those guys. Don't want to see Mark have a bad qualified run, but it will be fun to watch him start maybe mid-pack and break his way to the front, guys. Well, we'll be watching that. Another guy that we'll try to watch work his way around this racetrack is your brother, DW, Michael yeah. Walter, jumping first time ever in a Toyota. Well, he was very unhappy with this truck when he first went out in it this morning, but man, uh, Johnny Allen, those guys, they found a problem, they fixed it, and Michael went out and said, I don't know what you did to it, but uh, this baby's a rocket now. And, uh, I expect Michael to run really, really well tonight. Now, I hate to admit this, but Johnny Allen told me it was some bailing wire that they used to actually <laughs> yeah. calm his nerves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I was listening on the scanner, and I thought Michael was having a seizure or something. He was, he was, making, I thought the same. He was making all kind of weird noises, but it was because the truck was vibrating real bad. And he, was, he would run two laps and be out of breath. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, see, you see that balance right down on the racetrack. That thing was actually hitting the racetrack so hard, it, it actually felt like a vibration yeah. as he got right to the corner. So they actually tied that thing up with some safety wire like you were talking about, Rick, and he said that made all the difference in the world. Well, he quit complaining, I know that. <laughs> I don't know if it was singing, but it was some sort of different tones that were coming through his radio when he was out on the racetrack. Sixth quickest of the six that have gone, 32.479 for Michael Waltrip. He's one of the drivers that has to actually qualify on speed. Let's go down track side to right. Well, Eric Darnell sits here in his Woolrich uh, Ford. Uh, how's your race truck tonight? Actually, I think we're pretty decent. Uh, we went out in the first practice there, and our Woolrich Ford was pretty good. And uh, you know, we, we pretty much backed it up in the second practice, and I'm looking forward to a good race tonight. Mark Martin, fastest right now. Are you uh, able to go faster than that six truck? Well, that's about what we ran in practice. So uh, me and Mark were, you know, like eighth, ninth in the second practice, right by each other. So I think we'll run a similar time. Okay, good luck to you. The last time a rookie won in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, Carl Edwards right here in this number 99 truck. On the clock now, Ron Hornaday, the AES Chevrolet 33. Slow lap number one. That's the slowest truck of the seven thus far. 32.6636, uh, actually. You know, I'm, it might just be me and, and back in the day, but when the lights, when we were in a transition period like we are right now, where the lights are coming up and you're kind of in that dusted period of the evening, uh, it was hard to make that transition for me visually. To look at the racetrack with light shining on it and still a little bit light outside gave the track a whole different perspective. The guys gave you credit for also on the show before about the fact that there aren't lines on this racetrack. There's not really any any indicators on the walls as to where to slow down or where to get back in the gas either. Yeah, that would drive me crazy. You got to have lines. <laughs> <laughs> Some kind of markers anyway. Yeah, right? How do I know if you got in my lane or not if I don't have any lines on the track? <laughs> how do we know who to blame? That's right. How do you got where well, you were in my lane? <laughs> Cheerios, Betty Crocker, number 98 Dodge. Now on the racetrack, Aaron Crocker. Is that pretty low right there, would you say? I think that one is running about as low as you can run. <laughs> what do you think's holding the car up or the truck up? She had a great run last week. Finished 16th, but ran up in the top 15 for a lot of that race. I think that may have been one of her best events of the year in this uh, Chex Dodge. That young lady just needs a couple of good things to happen to her. She needs some really good, solid runs to get her confidence that she can still get this job done, and I believe she can, and I know Ray does too. Last week you mentioned that 16th place finish tied her career best. So somewhat on a roll, but you see a lot of sparks. That obviously can't be making her faster. No, but that's that's really just uh, light pieces of aluminum that they use across the nose of that thing. It'll make a lot of sparks. It shouldn't be hurting the performance any. Second lap for Aaron Crocker, 32.632. So that was her quickest. She's eighth quick. Eight have gone, attempting to qualify for the final event of the year, Homestead Miami.
David Starr now on the clock. He's completed one lap, 32.743 seconds on his first. That's just ninth quick of the ninth that have gone so far. I don't know the last two or three trucks, Phil, just look like they have not had any grip, as if the track is going through a transition of some kind. That 11 truck, it just took off coming out of turn four here, straight up to the wall, a lot like it's doing right there. He's gonna have to get out of the throttle or he's gonna hit the wall. He had a wiggle right in the center, had to chase that truck all the way up to the wall there. Looked like he had to pedal the throttle a little bit, so we'll see what it does on uh, lap number two. A little bit quicker, about three-tenths of a second, 32.444. That slots him in seventh right now of the nine trucks that have qualified. Hermie, who have you caught up with? Or is it Ray? Well, I can tell you a little bit about what's going on down here at the front of the grid. If you guys will take a look here at the front of Mike Skinner's Toyota. Now, as Daryl was saying, you want this part of the splitter right here to go all the way down and ride just above the bottom of the racing surface. But Mike Skinner's truck in practice was not like that. It was about three inches up. And I want you guys to watch his truck when he makes his first lap out there because as he came off turn four, it was not that low. But let's talk to Skinner because, Mike Skinner, you are usually the guy that's a threat for the pole. But in this practice, we saw you back about 10th what's up with that well, I think we ended up third in the second practice Ray but um, you know we, we really concentrated on race stuff today and we tried some things with the truck and um, I don't know how it's gonna qualify I think uh, if we could get us a top five or a top ten qualifying effort and then a top ten finish we can stay in the top ten in points so it's all about tens tonight well and you guys have been on a roll Mike Skinner has had eight consecutive top tens in the last eight races Hermie with Jack Sprague, Jack, 31-9-8-1. Not a bad lap, but more importantly, how'd you truck for the race? Must not be very good, because Jack was without <laughs> don't words. don't even want to talk He's about it. Gonna talk about. <laughs> I don't got anything to say about that. <laughs> we had a little technical difficulty there. Obviously, Jack would have been a man of many words, qualifying third quick to this point. I'll just say it for Jack. That team has really done a good job uh, the last half of the season. They've come on strong with a win, and uh, I think that team has really started to gel the second half of the year. Casey Kingland attempted qualifying. Tenth quickest of the ten that have gone. That locks Michael Waltrip into the field. There are 37 attempting for 36 positions. So Mikey's happy anyway. FoxSports.com and SpeedTV.com form the most powerful online team in NASCAR. For breaking news, in-depth analysis, detailed driver stats, and more, log on to SpeedTV.com. Keyword chase now. Chasing a top 10 starting position, the number 88 of Matt Crafton, currently sixth quick on his first lap. Had a great race last weekend at Phoenix, finished in the top five with that Menard Chevrolet. A little bit off the pace in practice here. He was 27th quickest in our final practice, but uh, we'll see what Matt can do. Lap number one, 32.196. Lap number two, 32.137. So six right now out of the 11 trucks, so not too bad. I think he's done a pretty good job as well. The team has really been strong the second half. In happy hour earlier today, Bill Lester set the quickest time at 31.612 seconds. We would expect a few trucks to be down in that area as the sun is going down. Temperature will start to go down a little bit, but as I mentioned, it's been overcast all day. Daryl, that truck looks good on the racetrack. Now, he may not be running fast, although he was in practice, but that is more traditionally what you would think you would want to run for for a line around here for qualifying. Yeah, you see he's right near the bottom of the racetrack. He lets it run up the track. That's just to keep from binding it up, so he gets a lot of good speed coming out of the turn. Let's see what he gets. First lap, six quickest. The only problem, Phil, with running down on the bottom like that is it takes a lot of horsepower. To dig it up out of that hole. it's got to come up out of that hole, and that's why you see the truck kind of slide up the hill coming off because it's got all that momentum from the bottom. And remember, these trucks have about 100 less horsepower than the next up cup cars do because they have a little bit smaller carburetor. Leave out a runner up the hill just a tad. That might be a good line, though, if he can run that line in the race. Oh, yeah. When everyone else is searching for the top of the racetrack, if Bobby Jr. can stay down there towards the bottom to the middle, he may have something for him. Slows down on his second lap, 32.270 seconds. So the fastest for Bobby Hamilton Jr. Puts him in sixth. On the clock, Eric Darnell. Currently leading in the Rookie of the Year point standings. 
Hendricks will be another Rookie of the Year award for Roush Racing. I think it's safe for us to say that he's going to lock up Rookie of the Year. Uh, had some great finishes, had a couple, had a second place finish this year, a couple third place finishes. Really nobody even close. Well, Phil, you've been pretty good at just handing guys awards before the race is even over. I'll give it to him. <laughs> I'm going to give it to him. <laughs> now, Bay Darnell, is that? That's his grandfather. Grandfather, yeah. that's right. Yeah, long Bay time Arca, Arca, USAC competitor. Yeah. Your uh, brother raced against him a lot. Yeah, sure did. Back in the day. Look at that. Great lap for Eric Darnell. 31.734. That's a good tenth of a second right now, faster than his teammate, Mark Martin. See there, Rick? Phil knew what he was talking about. <laughs> He's the rookie of the year right there, son. But hold on. Do you get an award for qualifying? Yeah. You get, oh. a, you get a Bush Pole Award, don't you? Uh, money? Prestige? <laughs> okay. Now All qualified right. his teammate. You win. I'm not going to argue with you two. Might even get a, you know, get a picture made with some trophy girls. <laughs> Eric Darnell. Fastest thus far, 31.734 seconds around this mile and a half. Homestead Miami Speedway. Qualifying continues. We've got Benson and Bodine coming up. He started the whole thing, and I finished it. Speed Performance Award. Best rivalry. It is these two men measuring themselves against each Shots other. Rock. He's still closing on Nicky Hayden, but not close enough to get past the American. I'm not letting the French guy clinch on American soil. It ain't going to happen. People know they're seeing history here. Log on to SpeedTV.com and cast your vote for Best Rivalry, Speed Performance Awards. Driven by BF Goodrich Tires. BF Goodrich, take control. Welcome back to qualifying for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series final event of the season. Chad McCovey now on the racetrack in the 08 Chevrolet. DW, that best rivalry, you would have been in the running for that a few times over your career. I probably could have won that hands down. <laughs> <laughs> I could create some controversy <laughs> and rivalry. <laughs> That's a fun award, though. I, I'm anxious to see what other folks think about that. Ninth quick for Chad McCovey, 32.185 seconds. That's another young driver that's done a great job. And that and Bobby Dodder, Gene Christensen's truck right there. GPS store came on board. Garmin uh, GPS is a uh, great, uh, great team effort right there. Eric Almarola now on the racetrack and on the clock. Ray Dunlap, I believe. Yeah, let's, with Mike Bliss. Yeah, I have. And you know what? Uh, he starts 17th in the cup race on Sunday. Is that right? Great qualifying run there. What, do, what should we expect out of this truck master Chevy? We haven't been really good. You know, we've been really tight getting in the corner so um, qualifying we were really loose so we haven't really found a good balance but Dave uh, changed a bunch of stuff for this thing and uh, maybe we'll figure out how to get this Chevy Silverado uh, running better. How do you like this racetrack? I always love this racetrack it's wide uh, you can do a lot of racing here and that's fun. Okay Mike Bliss about ready to get in his number 16 Chevrolet and head out to the racetrack. This Chevrolet came awful close to scrubbing the paint off the side of that truck. Pretty dead gum good run though. It's fourth quick there at a 31882. And it's just like you say, he's got it power down. She's up the hill. She gets a little loose, but I guarantee you one thing, he never lifted. He never lifted. He's That's qualifying, baby. You, you, you go or go home. Another look right there. You see the truck right down on the racetrack right there, the balance in that truck. It's oh so close when he gets a little tail happy, but it puts him up in fourth. Great run for Eric Almarola. Well, you, you're between a rock and a hard place there, the hard place being the wall. You got the wheels turned as far as they'll go. You got to pedal all the way down, and the wall's coming, and you can't lift. And, and then it gets sideways. And then it jumps and you've got the wheel as hard, turned as hard left as you can. You got to turn it back to the right. Got his attention. Enough to put that truck in the fourth fastest spot. Here's a guy we always expect to be challenging for a pull. Mike Skinner now on the racetrack. Listen. As dominant, I guess you would say in practice earlier. Well, Ray what? said, look, watch his nose, so we need to watch his nose. He is not one of the trucks we talk about all the time about the trucks coil binding. He is not one of the trucks that's coil binding. You see there's a little bit of a gap from the racetrack to his balance. Now, he gets down in the corner. He's got soft enough springs in that truck to get it down, the, down to the racetrack right there. But when it gets on a straightaway, that truck will actually come up a little bit, and there'll be a little gap between the racetrack. There you see right there, it's probably three inches, like Ray was talking about, between the racetrack and the bottom of the balance. But it really, he's on pole, so it really doesn't matter because it's all about the balance. If the front likes to be up like that, it must mean the back's down a little bit too. Quite a bit quicker for Mike Skinner on his first lap and improves it on his second to 31.42 seconds. That is the quickest that quickest lap anyone has run today in a truck. 
Yeah, that's a great lap right there by Mike Skinner. That's a full three tenths of a second faster than our second place truck right now of Eric Darnell. Mike Wallace stepped into the number 15 Mikasuki number for Chevrolet for this race. And yeah, Mike Skinner already has seven holes this year. He's obviously locked up the award for winning the polls. I'm going to give him that one <laughs> since he already locked it up. And it may be eight. Man. Hey, my, this 15 truck, though, looks like he's dancing with the stars. Man, look at that thing. Whoop, 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 whoop. He's got his hands full. Mike Wallace continuing around this mile and a half track, now starting his second lap. Ray, I believe you caught up with one of our championship contenders. Yeah, that'd be Johnny Benson, and he has the X-Side Toyota this weekend. And, Johnny, I was showing at the top of the show here, you've been at the top of the charts. You got anything for Skinner? He ran a 31.42. That's pretty quick right there, so I'm uh, not sure. I mean, uh, I'd like to be on the outside this week, maybe. So it, uh, our outside Toyota's pretty good. Uh, Rick Rent and all the guys have done a tremendous job all year. And if we could get that just a little bit close to what we had last week, I'm looking forward to the race. I assume this is a go for it night for you. Just try to get up front and lead all the laps. Well, that's all we can do, you know. I mean, it's um, we're, we're going to run this race no different than we have this, you know, all year long. So, I mean, our guys are been doing great. It's been a great year. No matter what happens, uh, their championship caliber race team. So I guess we end up second. We end up second, but we're not We're not going to. Nothing's, nothing's done until, uh, obviously, the last lap of this race. I hear you. Good luck. That is Johnny Benson. Five wins this year so far in the Craftsman Truck Series. You know, Johnny alluded to he wants to be on the outside of Mike Skinner. Last week at Phoenix, Johnny had the pole. His teammate, Mike Skinner, was in the outside. They made contact on the very first lap. Johnny spun out coming off turn number four and came back to win that race. Yeah, just sucked him around as they went off in the corner. But, you know, this is two totally different ends of the, of the spectrum here. You got Johnny, who will want to be up front and lead all the laps, and you got Todd back there just riding herd on everybody, waiting for eight trucks to fall out. Yeah, he would love to have nobody near him. Exactly. The first half of this race, as you mentioned, until at least eight trucks fall out. Ted Musgrave, a defending champion in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, is still looking for his first win in 2006. It's been a long time since Ted Musgrave has been out of victory. Bike. Yeah, every every uh, season he's been in the truck series running full time since 2001. He's won at least one race, so this would be a big disappointment to Ted, but he's still going to have a good top five point finish, so he's never been out of the top five end points in the truck series. So Ted Musgrave, sixth quickest. 18 have been on the racetrack. We've got 18 to go. Special edition of the Speed Report. Tune in as Drew Johnson recaps the 2006 NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series season. From the highlights to the high drama, all the action will be covered. Plus, the 2006 Series champion will join Drew for a live interview. A special edition of the Speed Report tonight, 10.30 Eastern, live on Speed. Phil, you think that's going to be Todd Bonine, I'm guessing? I do. I, Darryl, you're gonna, you agree with me, right? You think it's going to be Todd Bonine? I, I, I can't very well bet against you. <laughs> Not with the odds, the way they are. <laughs> It, it's, it's a long shot for Johnny to, you know, to pull this thing out. Again, it's all going to be on Todd, the start of the race. The most nervous moment for the night is going to be Todd Bodine when he reaches up and hits that starter switch. <laughs> oh, God, please let it start. Because <laughs> after that, I might have a chance. <laughs> Ray Dunlap, I believe you've got front row Joe. Absolutely, and uh, he is back in this Ginn Resort Chevy. And Joe, tell me what you're looking for in qualifying here tonight. Uh, I tell you what, uh, the Ginn's uh, Clubs and Resorts Chevrolet Sil Silverado has been quick. Uh, first, first thing out this morning, we were right there, top of the chart. Uh, stayed on the same tires most of the practice, so uh, when we did a qualifying run, you know, we were right there. I think we ended up fifth, but uh, this place is funny. If you can get in the corner just right, and the thing sticks getting in, you can have a heck of a lap. So uh, I'm excited. This is a blast. You know, we ran Talladega, and then we ran Atlanta, and this place is fun too. So uh, I think we got a truck we can win with. Okay, switch from qualifying to race and tell me what the strategy is tonight. How do you get to victory lane here? Well, you must first finish. I found that out in Atlanta. Uh, you just got to finish the race. If you can finish the race, uh, I think we're going to have a good shot. Uh, we've been really good on long runs, and that's what it's going to take. Okay, good luck to you. Joe Nemechek back in the number 46 Chevy.
Phil, just look at that seat, though. Look how he is surrounded by those headrests. I mean, he's sitting down in that thing. That is such a great advance that we've done with seats, technology. He doesn't have that big old rib support over there to break his ribs on the right side anymore. We learned that the shoulders are much stronger than the ribs. They're now supported up there, plus his head is protected. Uh, that's just a great improvement over what we had years ago. It's amazing how much how much they've come in the last five years or so with the seat technology. This, we can't say enough about the safer barriers here. I mean, when you hit the wall, you're going to have some damage and it's, you're going to feel it, but it's nothing like hitting a concrete wall with, without that energy absorption in between. Well, to a little bit, I think it might be false security because we've walked away from some really hard wrecks, but I also think it makes the guys drive a little more uh, recklessly, too, because they do walk away from them. Willie Allen qualifies seventh quick on his first attempt. Welcome back under the lights at Homestead Miami Speedway. Brad Keselowski now on the clock. Brad just run a handful of races this year, but he qualified seventh in Kelly Sutton's truck at Memphis. That's his best career qualifying effort. Another ARCA family product. Uh, his brother Ron, I raced with Ron. I think, I'm not sure if, you're, if Benny did or he not. He did, sure did. But yeah. uh, just a great racing family from the Midwest. And his father Bob was an ARCA champion. Bob, yep. Many time ARCA champion. Ron, actually, his uncle. Uncle. Ron's uncle his Ron. uncle. That's right. Yep. Bob is his father. Yep. Brother Brian ran in the ARCA series, actually got his first win this year in the ARCA series. Salem, was it? Salem, Indiana? That's correct. Mike Bliss now on the racetrack. Hermie, I believe you caught up with Ted Musgrave. I do have Ted Musgrave. Ted, not a bad qualifying run, not what you wanted, but a five year winning streak on the line for you tonight. Can you do it? <laughs> got a good truck. Uh, actually, a little snug qualifying. We never made a qualifying run, so we weren't really sure. So, uh, no, in practice was pretty good. I know it's on the line, but uh, we'll see what we can do. I'll tell you what, though, the AC Toyota's running pretty good in practice. I think we got something for him this time. Look at for Ted Musgrave tonight, looking for a win in five straight seasons, guys. Mike Bliss gonna come down, complete lap number one. Jumps up to seventh on the board, 31.933 in the strutmasters.com Chevrolet. The old blister's been running pretty good the last few weeks, too. Yeah, it really has. Got that big win a few weeks ago, this 16 truck. You know, we used to say right that that used to be disconcerting when a, when a truck or a car or whatever would rub the racetrack. Now, when it's rubbing the racetrack, you know it's down there, digging where it's supposed to be. Exactly. Well, and that's just barely scraping it. Makes a lot of, makes pretty pictures at night. Sealed to the racetrack, Mike Bliss in that number 16 Chevrolet, Strutmaster Chevrolet, and his qualifying effort puts him seven of the 22 that have been on the racetrack. When we come back, Johnny Benson will be on our championship contender. Welcome back, Shane Huffman, one of the trucks that has to qualify on time to make it into this field, currently 15th quickest, and so he will be racing tonight. Yeah, only one truck will go home, and here's our championship contender right here, JB, Johnny Benson, and the XI Toyota. The Johnny, I like that paint job. Johnny Benson's actually a track owner, correct? He is, and actually, Brian Keselowski, Brad's brother, won his own race at Berlin, which Johnny Benson is a co-owner of in Grand Rapids, Michigan. So I was wrong. I said it was Salem, Indiana. It was actually Berlin Speedway in Grand Rapids, Michigan that this guy co-owns. This is big right here. Johnny Benson, what he needs to do tonight is finish in the top two. And to do that, it would definitely help if he started up front. That looked like a pretty nice lap but it wasn't. 16th quick for Johnny Benson. He really needs to pick it up. Yeah, that's uh, that's disappointing, I know. Yeah, that may be one of the slowest laps Johnny's run since he's been here. That truck has been so good in practice. He made two or three actual quali simulated qualifying runs trying to figure out how to get that truck up front because Rick Wren said we to lead the most laps, it sure would help to start up front. Right down toward the bottom of the turn in three and four it's just really tight uh, you can see him really working the wheel sliding the nose up the hill like i said that buffs off a lot of speed moves up four spots 12th quickest for johnny benson turning a 32.039 seconds right on lap well rick if you take a look at the side of the number four dodge you'll notice a little bit of repair there on the front chase miller was very very fast today here at this racetrack in both of the practices but right towards the end he got into the wall just a little bit the team had to do a good bit of repair but chase you've had an awfully fast race truck here at homestead are you nervous at all about going out there after the hit contact of the wall uh no you know the dodge motorsports dodge has been good all day uh, you know we had a little mishap qualifying got a little too loose but you know the guys worked real hard, and I believe they got it fixed up just right. And uh, we'll go out here, make a solid run, make sure the truck's still in good shape, and have us a good race tonight. Okay, 
good luck to you. Chase Miller fast at the top of the charts in both practices. Hermie? With Mike Skinner, Mike, you lead this series in number of races led, miles led, just about every statistic. But I know you'd like to add another win to the column tonight. Looks like your truck's good in qualifying. How is it for the long run? Well, I really don't know, Hermie. I, I, I think it's pretty good. You know, we, uh, we tried a couple different things today, and, and Jeff Hensley and the guys worked on it. We've been really, really tight getting in the corner off the gas. Really awesome in the gas. And I think you race more from the center out than you do getting in. So we'll just kind of have to see what it does and see if the racetrack gains as much grip as I think it's going to. But, uh, you know, if we can, um, you know, stay in the top ten and qualifying, which I think we can, and uh, finish in the top ten, maybe we can uh, be in the top 10 in points here at the end of the year for the Craftsman Truck Series. And from where this race team came uh, with our DNFs and, and the luck, some of the luck that we've had, uh, we'll sure take that for this year and start fresh in Daytona. It's a high-speed racetrack, and you can look for Mike Skinner to be towards the front all night long, guys. And Mike Skinner, actually, uh, it was just announced, re-signed, and so he is going to be with Bill Davis Racing until 2009. Take a look at Joe Nemechek right here, Daryl. He had a little bit of a little bit of a wobble here in the center of the corner. And I really believe it's on his first lap, and I really believe if he hadn't had that happen, he could have very well won the pole. So that truck was fast, but you know that had to knock a bunch of time out of it up there. Second quick for front row Joe. Now on the racetrack, our track record holder, David Rudiman in that number 17 Toyota Tundra. A man for qualifying, I'm telling you. He's won the pole here the last two the last two races. The only two times he's ever been here in a, in a truck, he's won the pole. And uh, he likes the mile and a half racetracks too, Phil, as you well know. Th that graphic that was just on there had the owner as Daryl Walter Motorsports. It's, you that, probably know something about well, him. Yeah, don't you? yeah, that's that's my team, <laughs> my guy. Got to be proud of the progression David Rudiman has made since he came into NASCAR. We had some issues early on, but we got them all worked out, and David has turned into a really mature, smart race car driver. He averages uh, 6.7, I think it is, on these mile-and-a-half racetracks. And, oh, by the way, there are nine of them, so that's a good, that's the right track to have good average on. Yeah. They make up such a big part of our series here, 25 total races and nine, that's over a third of them. So uh, if you want to be good at any certain type of racetrack, the mile and a half would be it. Second quick for David Rudiman, so he will not get the pull tonight for this race. It's still in Mike Skinner's hands. Rudiman runs 31.685. But I like a track that picks up on the second, I like a truck that picks up on the second lap. That means it's gonna be a good race truck. Michelle Jordan talking with Todd Bodine before they take to the racetrack. Ford 200 qualifying continuing from Homestead, Miami Speedway. Quite a contrast in hit here. <laughs> Another Toyota Tundra on the racetrack for qualifying, and this one's also been fast today. Bill Lester on the track for his qualifying effort. He was actually the fastest truck on the racetrack in happy hour. Actually, Bill Davis Racing, which obviously Bill Lester is part of Bill Davis Racing, along with Mike Skinner and Johnny Benson, had the three fastest trucks in happy hour. We know Skinner's on the pole right now. Johnny did not run as well as we thought he would have. He's in 14th, but Bill Lester is maybe one of the guys that has a chance at knocking Skinner off the pole. Good looking lamp. Second quick for Bill Lester, and that's on his first lap. 31.671. He's got to increase almost a second, a tenth and a half to get Skinner. Quarter of a second, actually, if you do the math from a 31.2 to a math. He's not doing good math tonight. <laughs> Ray Dunlap. Well, guys, just moments ago, as you saw Michelle Jordan and Todd Bodine standing there talking, Todd has been reflecting, kind of standing over there by himself. And you, and Michelle, were having a little talk about being nervous. You're not really nervous tonight, are you? A little bit, you know, uh, a lot on the line here. It's, uh, I'm not nervous about myself or my team. I'm nervous about racing, what can happen. You know, you never know what happens. A, a flat right front or a broken ball joint or the rear end gear breaks or somebody blows up in front of you, you never know. Uh, that's the things that I'm nervous about. Michelle, like Atlanta and Texas and Talladega. And we just got away with it. We got fortunate. We had a lucky horseshoe that Johnny had some problems at the same time and uh, now Michelle and myself were talking about the first time we ever were nervous driving race cars and it, I can't tell you his story but it was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right good luck to you tonight. Todd will jump in this lumber liquidators Toyota and get ready to go out and qualify and as I showed you at the top of the show he was way in the back.
in the first couple of practices. I just didn't think it was necessary for Ray to say that he was, he called it a reflection. I just don't think that was necessary. <laughs> well, you mentioned the headgear when we went <laughs> off the break. Terry Cook running his final race with PPC Racing in the truck series, trying to qualify toward the front in the number 10 Ford. Terry was a winner this year. Won a big race in Kansas. Hey, Daryl. DW. Ray's yeah. calling you. Yeah, Darryl. go ahead, Ray. Daryl, I didn't say that his head was reflecting. I said oh, he sorry. was reflecting on the season. He was looking back, oh, oh. kind of thinking. It was a it was a very serious moment. For oh, him. oh was, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I it, thought you it were. It wasn't the lights shining off of the top of oh, the onion. I totally, I'm sorry, Ray. I misunderstood that. <laughs> I thought you were referring to the onion, you know? <laughs> Where Terry Cook has his hands full down there in the center of the corner. 26 quickest on lap number one. Does not improve on lap number two. 32.953 for Terry Cook. 26 out of the 28 trucks so far. 28 have been on the track. Todd Bodine, second to last to go out for qualifying. We'll be back with more Homestead Miami. Wild ride for Robert Richardson. This is his second lap of qualifying, and hang on, Robert. Gets loose, getting in the corner, does a good job of nailing the throttle to keep that truck from backing up into the outside wall. You see his left front tire is already flat right there. Lap number one, 33.373. The problem with that is, that's right now the slowest time of the trucks that have to qualify in on time. We've told you that only one truck's gonna go home. There's only one truck left that has to qualify on time, and that's Michelle Jordan Jr. So if he beats Robert Richardson, which Robert did, again is the second slowest truck here, then uh, then Michelle Jordan makes a race and Robert Richardson goes home. Problem could be Todd Bonine might have Michelle Jordan nervous now after their little talk about getting nervous before races. He still has to go they, out and again. He goes out 35th. They were just reflecting. I just, <laughs> you know, that's what Ray said. Hermie, I believe you're with Bill Lester. I am, Rick. Bill Lester, P2 right now in the Waste Management Toyota. What is it about these mile and a half racetracks? You always seem to qualify up front. Well, you know, I really owe it to the guys at Bill Davis Racing. We're working really hard. And what happened is this truck was good from the word go. And we've made really minor adjustments. And, you know, I was happy with it from the start. And, uh, you know, we backed up pretty much what we mocked. Um, I would have liked to have gotten that five. You know, these guys are real tough customers this year. I think they just darn near swept all these poles. But, uh, you know, I'm really happy with what we were able to do with Waste Management Toyota Tundra. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to a good race tonight. Tight qualifying session. Misses the pole by three one hundredths of a second, guys. Yeah, Bill Luster was awfully good here last year. Qualified second for this race and then finished fifth. Tied his career best last year. Hang on, Chase. That's about where Chase got into the wall earlier today. On his first lap. 13th quick. You're coming up out of that turn, and you're just hoping that that progressive banking is picking up as you get up near the top to catch that baby. We mentioned Chase Miller very quick in practice earlier today. Their day started about 9.30 this morning when they were on the racetrack, working on getting these trucks exactly the way they wanted them for racing. Chase's was working very well in the first practice, but then had problems when he went for his mock qualifying run. And still a good lap right there, 13th so far. Actually moves it up to 11th on lap number two, 31.955. So he's got to be real happy with it. These are his first laps on the racetrack since he hit the wall in practice. Johnny Benson is qualified. Todd Bodine still to come when we come back. Four to Bobby East on the racetrack. Currently 27th quickest on his first lap. This is one of the Wood Brothers JTG racing entries right now. That number 21 next year, Mark Martin told us in the garage here that he will drive this truck at least 10 races next year for Wood Brothers JTG racing. One more famous name to drive the <laughs> famous number 21. And, and that has a lot to do with why he wants to do that. He said, hey, the Wood Brothers have been around forever from the time I was a little boy. And he said, I'm, I'm really excited about driving something that, uh, that they have a piece of. Huge I, I'm pickup. with him. Leonard Wood will have that thing tuned up right for him. Bobby East increases seven tenths of a second on his second lap. Let's go down to Herbie. With David Rudin. And David, third in points, third on the grid, 18 top tens. But I know you'd like to get that win before we get done here tonight. Yeah, you're not kidding, man. I tell you, it's uh, it's been a decent season. But uh, if you can't come at it with a win at some point, it's just kind of just doesn't feel right. So uh, we've been hanging in there, been plugging away. Guys doing a great job. It's just uh, we've been about that much too short. And, and uh, that's all you got to be in an NASCAR Craft Truck Series. You're not going to win, so it's a tough deal. How's your truck for tonight? 
I'm a little worried about it. We, 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 did, we unloaded, we weren't all that good. Uh, Jason overstreeting guys, really, we've done a bunch of changes on it, and I think we've gotten it better, but you know how it is. When it drops the green, you're going to find out then, I guess. Well, DW's up top. I'm sure he'll have some suggestions for you before the green flag. Thank you. Thanks, David. Back to you guys. Yeah, it's all about wins tonight, Dave. <laughs> Forget all that other stuff I ever told you. It's all about a win tonight. But a great season. No wins for David Rudeman this year, but what a terrific season. Third in points. Going to move up to the Cup and the Bush Series next year. He's going to be a busy boy. Big undertaking for him next year. Jim Harris must have known that you were in the booth tonight, DW. Got some flames on the hood of that 59 Toyota. Yeah, I drove Jim Harris's truck. That's how I got to hook back up in the truck series back there in 2001 or two, whenever it was, two, I guess. Chad Chapman now behind the wheel for the number 59. Stacy Compton was driving the truck at the time. He called me and said, I can't run Martinsville. Can you do it? I said, I'll call you back in three days. <laughs> Let me talk to Steve. I said, I got to go negotiate. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was first day. I just kind of leaked it a little bit. See how it went over. Chad Chaffin, 19th quickest in his qualifying effort. When we come the Onion, Todd Bodine will be on the racetrack. We'll find out where he'll start for the final race of the 2006 season. Michelle Jordan, the number 50. His first lap, 29th quickest, but more importantly, he is locked into the race. He ran 32.494. That means Robert Richardson will not start the final race of the season. And it's a shame, really, for Robert Richardson. That team has been here each and every week. Uh, he's made it, I think, 20 or 21 of the, of the 25 races, but uh, too bad we only had one truck over a full field here, and unfortunately, Robert Richardson's spin on his la second lap of qualifying probably kept him from making this race. Michelle Jordan improves to 24th quick. The season's coming to an end, and that means it's time to play the Speed Fantasy Cup Homestead Challenge. Log on to SpeedTV.com now and register for your chance to win $10,000. Sign up tonight for the Fantasy Cup Homestead Challenge. I don't care how big a point lead you got or how comfortable you are, this is the most nerve-wracking weekend of your life right here. And Top a week, nine. really. I guarantee, I'll guarantee you, Top of Nine lost some sleep this week. He knew he only had to finish 28th, but still, as, he, as we heard him say earlier, so many things can happen. Well, that's the whole thing. It's not just Todd. Now, he's got to get in and drive it. All the guys that are working on it, every piece of that thing has been gone over time and time again. And nobody working on that team or on that truck wants to be responsible for something happening to it. And Todd Bodine right now is feeling every bump on this racetrack in his seat because during practice it was like, I, I feel a little vibration here or it's not right here. I mean, he is really attuned to what's going on right now with this team. He's sitting on eggshells. <laughs> That's what it feels like. Let's First see. lap for Todd Bodine, 20th quickest, 32.112, just behind Johnny Benson. Benson qualified 17th quickest. They made a lot of changes to this truck too. Mike Kelman Sr. and Jr. after practice before qualifying he said we just can't take a chance on leaning too hard on the right front tire we changed the suspension over there he said we gotta we gotta make sure we can finish this race without having any trouble and that's it he just gotta finish because we know he knows he can outrun eight trucks if he doesn't have any trouble second lap for Todd Bodine improvement 31.941 seconds he moves to 12th quick in qualifying and that is a great effort. It really is. I mean, that's a great effort. Uh, Mike Hillman's one of my heroes. Uh, Mike's been, he's a great crew chief. His son is too. They've been around a long time. Mike never had a great team to work with. He always kind of had to piecemeal everything together just to show up. He's finally with a great organization. They got the money, they got the resources. He gets the results. Mike Hillman Sr., Mike Hillman Jr. with Todd Bodine looking for a championship in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, right? Hey guys, let me add to that just a little bit what Daryl was saying. Mike Hillman Sr. and Jr. both have the eye on going back next Hell Cup Racing. This team, Jermaine Racing that is, will go run some Cara Tomorrow races next year. And Todd Bodine truly believes that they can put together a team strong enough to contend for a win in next Hell Cup. They really believe that and, and I won't be surprised if they do it. Mike Hillman says, I miss racing on Sundays. And, and I think that's one of the, the opportunities that the car tomorrow may present a lot of teams. Initially, everybody's going to be playing off the same sheet of music. Nobody's going to really know what they got. So it's pretty equal for everybody. That's one thing I believe the car tomorrow will do. But over a period of time, it will always end up right back with the cream rising to the top. No advantage with the 
first race happens for everyone. Right now, Kerry Earnhardt, the final truck to attempt qualifying for our final race. Long term, it's hard to compete with the Rouches and the Hendricks and the Gibbs and the people like that that have so much resources. But early on, I tell you, with, with Toyota's help, obviously, Toyota provides a lot of the engineering for, for their teams. So that, that will kind of equate a little bit with some of the other guys. Well, and think about it this way, too, Phil. If all you're working on is the car tomorrow, Everybody else is working on two race cars at the same time. They got to work on the current car and the car tomorrow. And they're going to be completely different. Yes. Ray Dunlap. Well, Rick, I just think uh, from knowing what I know that this may be the last race tonight in this number 13 truck for Kerry Earnhardt. Of course, we'll talk throughout the course of the broadcast tonight about a lot of people whose future is up in the air as this being the final race of the season. But Willie Allen is here tonight in a spare truck for this Thor Sport team, and they're looking hard at him. They believe that may be the future. So tonight may be the last run for Kerry Earnhardt at Thor Sport. So Kerry Earnhardt coming off the racetrack. Again, he qualified 33rd, is in the show tonight. Mike Skinner will lead the field to the green flag this evening. Thursday on Speed, it's the premiere of Pink's All Out. No negotiations, no sandbagging, just straight up racing for cash. It's a single elimination slugfest on the quarter mile. Pink's All Out Thursday night, 8 Eastern, only on Speed. Ray Dunlap is with our pool sitter. Well, and he's standing here getting some photos taken with the Budweiser hat, the flag, and all that. Tonight, eighth career pole for the season and 32nd overall. Fastest truck on the qualifying. What's it going to be for the race? I don't know. I just want to thank this lady and her husband, Bill, for, for giving me the opportunity to drive this truck. It's awesome. And our backing from Toyota is just, we're just so blessed. We're just really glad to be here. And, we, would, we need to finish in the top 10 tonight, I think, to stay in the top 10 in points, Ray, and that's, that's our goal. We, we're going to try not to be too stupid. And some pretty good news this week. You announced that you will be back for sure in this same ride for a couple more years. She has to put up with me for three more years. But, How in the, what were you thinking, Gail? No, I wasn't. I wasn't. The same thing. Congratulations. Mike Skinner on the pole once again. One fast number five Toyota. He's at the front of the field when we go green. Take a look at our starting grid for the final race of the 2006 season. Mike Skinner and Bill Lester. Bill Davis racing. Teammates making up row number one. Got, got David Rudeman, Darrell's driver right there inside row number two alongside Joe Nemechek. I making like an infrequent start. I like what I'm seeing, boys. Teammates here on this uh, third row, Martin and uh, Darnell. Great run by Brendan Gaughan outside row number four there in the eighth spot. Fastest dodge, Brendan Gaughan. Got to Todd back here outside row six. Johnny Benson knows what he has to do. Starting in row nine, he's got to get to the front. He's got to lead laps. He's got to finish in the top two. There's Ryan Hornaday, David Starr, a bunch of good, couple good competitors, both winners this year, back in row number 14. Some pretty good trucks back in here that uh, probably just didn't qualify well, but I bet they race well. Michael Waltrip making his first ever start in a Toyota right here in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Hermie Sadler. We talked about that. Todd, 12th, no pressure qualifying that truck about an hour before race time, huh? Yeah, just a little bit. Uh, you know, the lumber liquidator's Tundra was like 30th in practice. I mean, we were really struggling hard, and I had my stomach was in knots, and, and uh, the guys made a lot of changes. I mean, a lot of changes, and it drove really good right there. So um, I feel a whole lot better for the race. Uh, we just got to get it freed up a little bit and, and uh, stay out of trouble, stay around the front. Todd Bodine trying to seal his first NASCAR championship. Guys? You won't want to change the channel. Keep it right here on speed. Trackside is next. And then following that, the Ford 200 from Homestead Miami Speedway. Live pre-race coverage beginning at 7.30 p.m. The buildup is starting. DW, you'll be on the set of that pre-race show. Headed down there now. Going to have some fun. Mike Skinner is on the pole. Todd Bodine will start this one 12th. Johnny Benson starts it 18th. The championship, even though Phil Parsons has said it's in Todd Bodine's hand, it has not been decided yet. Well, it hasn't, but mathematically it has not been decided. But what a great racetrack here. We're going to have trucks running on the bottom, in the middle, and all the way up to that wall. The last race of the 2006 season. You won't want to miss it because it's three months until Daytona. So stick around here on speed. different agendas tonight. 36. <laughs> Everybody's got something to prove.